Hi, in this video I'm going to show you briefly how to use Specimen, which is a really easy way to um, to turn a sample into an instrument. Specimen is just a really simple sample playback program, um, but it's MIDI controllable and it's got a lot of interesting synthesis capabilities as well. So even though this isn't Xsynth, you'll actually see where a lot of the features in Xsynth come into play in other synths by looking at Specimen. Um, here I've got well, the first thing to do really is to prepare the sample that you're going to use to turn into an instrument. Here I've got a recording in Audacity of a flute performance. Um, I'm just going to take this sample here and we'll just quickly prepare that. So I'll copy and paste that into a new project. It's in mono already. Um, if it wasn't in mono, I'd probably convert it to mono um, just because that's, that's easier to work with. We'll amplify that to maximum amplitude, that looks pretty good, and we'll zoom in and make sure we trim up the start and the end, do that with the delete key. Um, you can also, just to make sure that there's no sort of sudden clicks where the, the audio starts at the start, you can just select the first sort of really small smidge of audio and do a fade in effect, and the same at the end, do a fade out if we play this audio file now, nice, simple flute sound. Cool, that's exactly what we want. So I'll just export that out to the desktop. And now I can switch over to Specimen. I have Specimen sitting here, already running, already hooked up via Jack, so I don't need to do that. Um, to start with Specimen, basically just need to create a new patch. So we'll add a patch here, we'll call it, it seems like an appropriate name. And we can load the sample in. So here we are, flute sound. And if we click on this key here on the keyboard, we'll hear our sound. Now this keyboard represents where the sound is, or where the sound can be played on the keyboard. There are three things of note here. You can actually see one of them at the moment, which is the center note. That's the note that is basically considered the the note that is in the recording. So I know, for instance, that I was playing a B flat when I recorded that tune. That that note is a B flat. So I hit the middle mouse button just here above the B flat key to mark that as the center frequency. So that when I hit a B flat here sounds like a B flat because that's what was in the recording. Now to extend the range, if I click on any of these other ones, they currently don't make any sound. So I just have to click the left mouse button. I'll give myself a few octaves or a couple of octaves. Click down to there with the left mouse button and with the right mouse button, click up the range. Now I can play any of these notes. probably wouldn't want to go any lower than that or even as low as that really but we'll leave it in for, for the sake of fun um, and up the top now there's a couple of things to note here with the sound I can I've already got this hooked up to my MIDI keyboard as well so I can now play it on the keyboard there's a couple of things to note with the sound at the moment um, the first is that every time you hit a note, it doesn't matter if you just click it on very quickly or hold it down. So I hold it down, or if I just click very quickly, I get the same result. It's playing the entire sample and then stopping. Um, what we really want to do, well, there's a few options here in this playback menu. Trim will basically cut off the sound when it's finished or when, when you release the key, sorry. So now if I do a very quick click, same on the MIDI keyboard, um, it stops the sample mid-sample if it's still playing when you take your finger off the key. Um, now the, uh, the other thing is that these samples, so if I hold it down, hold down the key, it will play the whole sample still. Now the problem is that that sample is actually fairly short, so if I'm trying to sustain a note, I just can't do it, especially if you're playing a very fast note, or a very high note, sorry, because higher pitches are just 
achieved by playing the sample back faster. So while it will sustain lower at, a low, at the low end, at the high end, that sample will play back very quickly and you'll have a very short sound. Um, but we wouldn't mind being able to hold the, those notes. I mean, for some sounds, you're not going to want to be able to hold the note. You know, if, it's, if you're sort of banging a percussive sound, then it's quite natural for that to just fall away. But for something like a flute, you want that to be able to sustain. So you can put it into loop mode here. Uh, and that will now loop the sound. It won't sound too great right now though because it's just playing the entire sound from start to finish each time, each loop. Um, but if you double click on the sample here, this graphical representation of the sample, we get to the sample editor. And here we can actually set start and end loop points on the sound. So we want to pick a range that's sort of representative of the sound but which has a start and an end sound that are fairly similar. If there's a, a difference between where you start your um, loop point and where you end your loop point, then it's going to come across as a very sudden jump in the sound as it's looping through and it's going to sound unnatural. So I'll say, yeah, we've got roughly similar amplitudes say here. So we left click to set the left loop point and over here we right click to set the right loop point. I'm going to hit this play button here to hear what it sounds like. Now that's actually not too bad. You can hear there's a bit of a rhythmic beating happening. What that is, is, is like I said, a, an abrupt change between the end of the loop and the start of the loop. Um, how the sound plays through, by the way, is that it starts at the start, goes through to the end loop point, and then loops back to the start, and then it just loops these bits continuously from then on. Um, so you still do get this attack phase. It doesn't the sound doesn't start here when you hit the key, it starts back here still. Now to refine the loop points a bit to try and eliminate that beating, you can zoom in. But what you really want to do this is <laughs> zoomed quite far in on the sample. You want to try and set the loop points as much as possible to a, a zero crossing. So say here so you can see the individual waveforms of the flute sound. So here I've set it to the start of a zero crossing, or the zero crossing at the start of a waveform. If I scroll along the sound to the end loop point, I'll do the same thing here, remembering that it's the right button to click here, otherwise you'll end up setting your left loop point here and you're not going to be very happy. Now if we play, You can sort of still hear that it's a, that it is a looping sound. It's it's kind it's kind of obvious, but it's a lot more subtle. There's no sort of harsh clicks or anything like that at the end of the loop. So it's a much smoother result. So if we close this out, we can now yeah you know, start playing chords on the keyboard. So that's kind of cool. That actually works pretty well now. So I've got a flute sound and it's, it's working pretty well. Now, the further you take it away from the actual sound recording, the, the less realistic it's going to sound, especially at the low end, because you'll, it'll start to sound very sort of stretched out. But that's just the nature of the beast. Um, if you wanted to do something with multiple samples, which is what you'd do if you were doing a professional sample library, um, Specimen is not the tool for that. You would use the sound font then, so you'd probably look at the, the Smurf sound font editor or even um, Linux sampler and the, the gig edit tool that it comes with for editing giga sample files and create a proper sample library. But Specimen's really good for this kind of simple, quick, just take one sample and spread that across the keyboard a bit so that you can get a bit of an instrument happening with it.